Afternoon folks, Mutton here again, still in Porto, and no visit to Porto would be complete without a visit to a port house. So I'm here today to bring you one of the biggest names of port, Taylors. Let's go in and check out their tour and their tasting. I've never been to before is because you get a self-guided tour here which is a bit more relaxed than following a tour guide around. You get this receiver and at every part of the tour there's a number that you press and it, the commentary corresponds to the numbers on this machine and you pick it up like a phone and listen to the expert commentary. This place was actually founded in 1692 by a chap called Job Beersley, but it was taken over by Messrs Taylor, Floodgate and Yeatman in 1838, and this is what it's become now. For some reason, Taylor's has stood out as the name of the brand. I don't know what happened to the other two and why they aren't as well known. Now, would they appreciate if I stuck my head under that bell and turned the tap on? Probably not. <laughs> there are barrels here as far as the eye can see, all of different sizes as well. Now apparently all these port houses are next to the river because of the humidity the river provides and allows the wine to mature more evenly. But um, one thing I should tell you is that um, like a lot of the world's best drinks, port came about as a, not quite an accident, but due to the circumstances of the time. People who drink IPA or India Pale Ale in the UK, which has now become an internationally popular style of beer, will know that that beer came about because they had to add extra hops to preserve the beer because it wouldn't get to the imperial troops in India in any drinkable state as it was in the first place. And during various wars between England and France, England turned to Portugal as an alternative wine market but again the wine wouldn't keep by the time it was shipped to England so they added aguardiente a type of grappa to the wine fortified it and it preserved the wine until it got to England so again like IPA Guinness and all sorts of other drinks these drinks came about not quite as they intended but they turned out to be great accidents or great circumstances to produce these drinks. How's that for steep vineyards? Huh. Anybody fancy a bit of this? Trampling on grapes? Well, no. Well, I guess that's probably just for show. I think it's all done mechanically now. Well, for those who are into their port, I suppose this is an archway or stairway to heaven. Now, 
when it comes to port there are all sorts of terminology that I don't really understand there's like I understand the difference between white and red and vintage because of wines I understand but we have dry white sweeter whites tawny ruby late bottle vintage vintages so uh, hopefully I'll find out a bit more about that on this trip and I have of course my resident expert Richard who knows a lot about this there are also a lot of audio visual elements to the tour and ob for obvious reasons I won't be filming the videos and the music crikey how big are these barrels so more big barrels and everybody I know in the English speaking world will know that barrels are produced by people called coopers but for my foreign viewers uh, that's the name of the people who produce barrels and you might know that there are a lot of people with the name cooper that's because a lot of english names are basically old trade names thatcher for example is another one one who thatches houses or the roofs of houses ah that must be the method of transport to cart lord myers away from the premises now I can't show the video but uh, we're in a room now with an incredible display where a lady is using I think it's very hot forked tongues uh, then pouring water over the area of the bottle where the forked tongues are being applied and actually then removing the top of the bottle that way that's incredible I've never seen that before but Richard has been to a place where that's been done Basically, I only tend to drink it when I'm in this city, or maybe in other parts of Portugal. Similar with Jerez and Madeira, I just have it in the locations. I think part of the problem is that in the UK, as is often the case, it's not really served and stored correctly, just sitting on a shelf at room temperature. I think maybe some of the ports you can serve like that, but a lot of them seem to need decanting, and to be honest, a lot of them... Uh, like red wines in the UK are served at way too hot a temperature. I've noticed most of the ports here have come slightly fresh, slightly chilled, and uh, I must admit it tastes better to me. Oh, another part of the exhibition. Do you know the Bishop of Norwich? No, uh, not really. Customary for port to be passed clockwise round the table. So all the custom so that all the guests rather have a turn at pouring themselves a glass. If the bottle or decanter comes to a standstill, the person who has failed to pass it on may be asked, Do you know the Bishop of Norwich? A polite reminder to get the port moving again. It's a reference to Henry Bathurst, the Bishop of Norwich between eighteen oh five and eighteen thirty seven who lived to the age of 93 by which time his eyesight was deteriorating and he had developed a tendency to fall asleep at the table towards the end of the meal. As a result he often failed to pass on the port decanter. Falling asleep at dinner? Oh no, <laughs> who would surely do that? Can't think of anybody who's ever done that. So now to the best part of the tour, to the tasting room. Now they give you a couple of reasonable but nothing special glasses of port but uh, of course you can supplement it with ports of your choice and I might just do that and uh, another reason why I like this tour is that they do have the most beautiful garden for the tasting how's that for a tasting garden really pretty isn't it so it was a lovely day and um, we decided just to stick to the two free glasses or the glasses that you get included with the tour. Now uh, we started with the chip dry white which is something that um, is quite nice with a bit of tonic in it and then the late bottled vintage from 2014 which Richard isn't that keen on. I don't know enough to make an affirmative opinion but I, I don't know, I thought it was okay, it was decent.
quite enjoyed those. Um, I have tried some of the other more fancy ports or expensive and refined ones that they have on the menu, and they're quite nice, but we decided since we were going on to another port house that we'd um, fill our boots there and uh, leave it at that uh, with the two free ones here. So uh, cheers and off we go. Now, has this peacock had a few too many glasses of port, or is this how they are naturally disposed to behave? So, there we are. Jolly splendid visit to Taylor's. We tried the chip dry white port, which is a good aperitif and goes well with tonic. And then we had the 2014 late bottled vintage, which was quite sweet, but was recommended with dessert. Not actually one of Richard's favourites, although I thought it was perfectly pleasant. And of course the trip to the caves was fascinating, we got to see how the port is produced and stored, and a little bit about the history of the place. So hope you enjoyed that little tour of Taylor's, on to the next place. So the next port of call is Calum. I've never had this port before, but Richard said it's pretty decent, so he's as good a judge as any. We're not going to do the tour of the caves and the cellars because it'll be a bit similar, but we'll crack straight on with the best bit, the tasting. So here we are, by the riverside. I'm not sure whoever sang down by the riverside meant this, but we've been presented with a little card of goodies. And uh, just like in a restaurant, you can go for the set menus or a la carte. And Richard's uh, chosen a la carte. So we're going to try the 1985 vintage, the 2012 vintage, and the 30-year-old tawny. With some water and some nuts and things, of course. So the boring bit first, water, nuts, and chocolate. Do you want me to serve half-half? Yeah, yes please, half-half, yeah. was a great game. I never tried it. <gasps> yeah, my friends told me, but I never tried it. Not, not enough employment perks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. And the 30 years. Yeah, it's good. And could you bring one more thing? I would like to try the white port white as well. Port? Do you want the white and dry that is the less sweet, like tropical fruits, or the lagrima that is the sweetest? Like uh, honey? Less sweet. Less so. sweet. Okay, very well. You look at the different colour. This is the most recent and very rare. Mm -hmm. This is nearly 40 years old now, it's only five or six years old. And it started to lose the colour and become more like a tawny look about it. And as you get more aged vintage port, it becomes more like this kind of light paper. Well, for half glasses, I must say they're quite uh, generous portions, and I'm not sure which order we should have these in. Aha! And we couldn't come here without trying the white port as well. Well, if you like it, Pop Kiss here, yeah. they have best older ones. Okay. They are really, really good. That's good of you to recommend a competitor. Yeah, or a... It's okay. Well, we are from the same group. Okay. That's not, that's not why I suggested they have the 10 years old is really good. Okay. And the Kuleta 2003 is the best one. No, but that's fine. Good. And whenever ah, it's convenient. Yeah. This one is Thank for you. you. And is there any order in which you'd recommend we drink these? Yes, you should try to the white, yes. then to the young ruby yeah. and the older one, and then the tawny. Okay. The tawny, they have and um, the nuts and chocolate, do any of them go better with... Uh... The chocolates go better with the, the tawnies. Okay, thank you. Okay. All an education for me, <laughs> this is... Uh... <laughs> 
port should be sweeter than chocolate. Wow, okay. Well, let's try the white. This is a half glass, a rather generous one, if I may say so. Hopefully filming this isn't going to get her into trouble for pouring such generous measures. Now, I, I prefer this to the one we just had at Taylor's. Uh, what's the flavour, Richard, that I'm catching uh, here? I can taste a tiny bit of, as you said, some tropical fruit, but also a tiny bit of honey as well. Uh, That's where I was going, honey. Of course, the glasses are pretty, pretty, and Richard was looking at uh, getting some dispatch, but it wasn't possible. Caleb and the little galleon, they are nice. So, dear viewers, on to the 2012. So, I've no idea what a 2012 vintage Caleb port should taste like. Wow, if that is that good, in for a treat with the other two, that is a much more refined drink than the one I've just had, and that was quite good as well. And the Taylor stuff was good as well. I suppose one could argue that we paid a lot more for this, though. So I'm struggling again to identify all the flavours here. But, uh, fortunately, we have Richard at hand to explain in full. And, of course, walnuts, just to stoke up the calorie bill from today. Often with these, you get a bit of tobacco. I don't know whether this is going to have it. Sometimes you get a bit of tobacco flavour. Oh, I, I kind of got a hint of dark forest fruits, but I, I'm not sure so whether that's, that's supposed to. Dark forest fruits, and I would say there is a hint of tobacco. Mm. At the back, it's like smoky and got a bit of a. See why people dip the end of their cigars. Oh, so people used to dip the end of their cigars in. Wow, okay. Before you smoke it. Oh, okay. I didn't know that. Now this reminds me of my favourite advert from the 70s in the UK, except for they've not covered them in chocolate. Some of you younger viewers will not have a clue what I'm going on about here. Nuts. Oh, here's all nuts. I like it, but it's probably because it's closer to a regular wine than a port. Well, I'm racing into form. I wouldn't say I'm lapping Richard, but I'm surging ahead. OK, so I've now moved on to the 1985 vintage, which is obviously a more sophisticated wine that's more for the hardcore port lover. I like it. I really like the 2012, but maybe that's because I'm more of a red wine drinker than a port drinker. Not That's not to say I don't enjoy drinking this. I wouldn't be here doing this otherwise. That would be too masochistic of me to just do that for a video. I mean, you won't see me having celery butties on video, for example. So we will have a bit of the milk chocolate, which is the recommended accompaniment. Also, another big whack on the calorie bill for today. And then... I can see how that goes together, actually. I mean, I'm not very good at describing all the flavours. I'm a bit better with what you might call more regular wines, but uh, it is a very nice combination. And one might ask, when should you drink this? Now, again, not an expert, but I would have this after dinner myself, not uh, before or during dinner. I know it's possible to go for fancy dinners, which in mainly involve port wine, but it's all a little sweet for me to have with a savoury dish. With some exceptions, like foie gras. What are you tasting there, Richard? Yeah, well, that's definitely lost the tobacco flavour of 2012. Not that it was, it was overpowering in 2012, it's, it's not present here. This is rich, 
dark red fruit? Well, I'd say that the, the red fruit, the berries are still there, but not quite as pronounced. It's a little more subtle than the 2012, which is what you'd expect, to be honest. So this one definitely gets Richard's approval. The tobacco is gone, the red fruits are still there, but not as pronounced as the 1985, but the aficionado de Porto, the man, he says yes. So it's good enough for him, it's good enough for me. And it might have been good enough for me anyway. I kind of have images of people in past days drinking stuff like this in the snooker room with big fat Havana cigars and maybe they did and finally we're on to the 30 year old tawny port and you can see that this is a completely different colour to the other ones we've had well obviously it would be different to the white but compared to the two vintage ports we've had this is a more a lighter, more translucent red. So wh why is that, Richard? Uh, it's the ageing process. Blood dissipates with age. When you start with a young ruby, you get the dark red colour. And as everything ages, it becomes more translucent. And particularly in tawny, which is a mixture of aged wines, you get this beautiful almost see-through red. I'm looking forward to trying this one and to accompany that we have dark chocolate as Richard suggested earlier. The um, sweet of the port, the less sweet the chocolate you have, is that right? Yeah. Port should always be sweeter than the chocolate we go into. Okay, so I'm, I'm looking forward to this combination, especially because I prefer dark chocolate. Uh, okay, we're getting uh, some rave reviews. I'd better get on with it before any VAT inspections occur. So Richard really likes this. I quite like this, but I actually preferred the two vintage ones we'd had earlier. But this is obviously a little bit sweeter, obviously with more concentrated flavours. Again, I'm not quite sure what I'm tasting here, but uh, it is pleasant, and uh, I can understand that combination of sweet chocolate and sweet port would be a little bit overpowering. As tall as go. That's a pretty decent. Now my take on this, and I'll just give you a little close-up, is foie gras blue cheese like Roquefort. I don't know about Cabrales from uh, Asturias, but I mean I'm game to give that combination a try and uh, I think Richard agrees uh, with that. Definitely the foie gras. And of course, if that combination does get tried out later, I'm afraid I'll have had so many that I won't be filming it. So sorry about that, folks. One of the things you should look for in the tawny is the legs. If you swirl this around and then watch how it drips down the glass, the viscosity of the liquid produces what's known as legs. You can see that that's very, very sweet, very risky. It's absolutely delicious. So there we are. I mean, I've seen that with brandy as well, and I can understand the importance and pacharan for those of us in the ACJ who like that particular beverage. Uh, I, I guess for most of you, when you're talking about legs, it's sport women or models, but uh, for us gastronauts, it is what's on the side of the glass. It does actually surprise me that port wine isn't used more often um, in place of sweet wines to go with the savoury dishes, as I mentioned, like blue cheese and foie gras. But uh, I suppose if you're making this stuff at home, you can use what you like, and by all means give this uh, 
stuff a go. And this Porthouse Kalen is not one I'd heard of before, but I'm really impressed with their stuff. And uh, don't just go for the big names, is what I'd say. And in fact, with most alcoholic beverages, I, you know, I'm happy to go with small names. People who are using their grapes and produce and their best stuff to make the drinks they bring to you rather than people who are using ordinary stuff to bring you their standard drink and reserving their best grapes for a premium mark. For example, Moe and Chandon and Dom Perignon. So come off the hour, come off the last half sip, or the last sip, one slightly half cup mutton, signing off. Hope you've enjoyed the video. Please like, share and subscribe, as I always hope you do. It's been a lovely day out at KLM and Taylor's. Bye for now. And don't forget, you can't beat a bit of mutton.